On drop rate is a series where I can only receive an item within its wiki stated rate, but with a twist. If I receive the item before or on its rate, I get to keep everything earned during the episode, including the desired item. However, if I do not end up getting it, I have to forfeit all the loot earned to you guys, the viewers. Let's introduce today's challenge. Today's challenge will focus on the well-known and near 19-year-old bosses, the Dagonoth Kings, composed of Dagonoth Rex, Prime and Supreme. After 19 years, they are still remarkably decent money, now sadly their iconic Dragon Axe is only down to 70,000, however the big money makers here is the Berserker Ring and the Archer's Ring sitting near 5 million and 3.5 million. But this time around, we are here for something else. The goal for this episode is to receive any of the three Dagonoth King pets, individually dropping at a 1 in 5,000 from their respective boss. Now the bosses are fought on our rotations, so I'll be defeating roughly 1,666 of each individual Dagonoth King to ultimately reach the goal of 5,000 overall. For this grind, I'm going with a tribrid setup as each Dagonoth King is weak to one part of the combat triangle each. For ranged, I'm using Boa Ferradina with crystal armor. For magic, I'm using Sang Staff and nothing else really as there's no magic defense on the boss. And Grassy Rapier for melee, totaling out at 850 million GP for this setup. You might be wondering what this gray blob is. Well, when you go to the Dagonoth Kings, which is a very long run, you need to pass these doors and usually you need two people, but you can actually drop the pet rock here and that is going to act like an actual player so you can actually pass it. And the second weird item I have in my inventory are these rune throwing axes which are required to open these three doors which normally requires three people with, with its special attack you can attack and it bounces on all of them and opens it for you. You really want your trips to last as long as possible when doing Dagonoth Kings because you have to run through this absolutely massive maze before you can even get to the bosses. Which is also the reason why I'm bringing Saradom in Godsword for a special attack to restore more prayer and health to stay there longer. Because there are three Dagonoth Kings, you don't want them to attack you all at the same time, so in the beginning you will have to go down and up a bunch from this ladder to find a point where no one is attacking you so you can actually set it up attacking one at a time. It doesn't really matter which one you attack at the beginning, but just getting the rotation started is what matters. But ideally, I like going with Rex first, which is the magic one, so for that I run all the way to the back of the room, and here I am safe to start attacking the first one. We have now added a loot tracker, but I do think it is going to be kind of difficult to actually make good use of this during this video, because every single time I kill a new one, the tracker is going to update to that specific KC. And I might not kill exactly an even amount of all of them, but overall of course we're going for 5000, and out of those 5k, this is the first one, and for an anti-fire potion, the best potion to use when you're slacking off at work. I am not really known for doing my diaries, but luckily the Fremenic one I have fully completed, and that is to a massive benefit for this grind specifically. It actually allows me to pick up every single Dagonoth bone with no problem at all during this grind because they drop noted. Honestly, the loot table for the Dagonoth Kings is kinda weird, they have a bunch of these kinda useless items on a 1 in 128 drop rate, Fremenic blade, Fremenic shield, a bunch of those things, I'm not going to be picking them up, but they have the same drop rate as the actual big uniques, the Dragon Axe, Reserve Ring, Archer's Ring, all of those rings, they all have the same drop rate. But because there's so many of them, I won't really call it a miss on the table if you do get one of these weird items. Okay, we have the first hard clue scroll of the grind. These are 1 in 42, but because I have the hard combat achievement done, they are down to 1 in 39. So in 5000 KC, we are going to do a lot of clue scrolls, most likely. And that marks the end for the first trip, we are out of prayer points, but uh, it seems like a pretty decent first trip. 55 KC done, a hard clue skull, no rings unfortunately, but let's go ahead and price check the first trip. Not every item is worth picking up, but of course most of the money comes from the Dagonoth Bones and the uniques we're going to be getting, but 600k for the first trip is not too bad. I guess I never showed my collection log, but I might as well to show you guys how many rings you can kind of expect from a grind like this. I've done nearly 1,500 Dagonoth Kings overall, and you can see how many of these rings, Dragon Axes, and all of these things I've got because they're not very rare. And hopefully we can get a pet during this video and fill in one of these three empty spaces. Oh, we have the first mud battle staff. Back in the days, these were a hot commodity. They also look very unique. They give infinite water and earth runes. But now, in 2024, it is only 36k. Honestly, the old kill counter wasn't working, so I set up a new one showing every single boss KC and how much money I've made from them so far, and a total kill counter above that as well. So from now on, you should see how much money I've made from each boss individually, and what overall KC I'm at at all times.
Oh, we have the first ring. Archer's ring, 3.46 million GP. That looks so good on the ground, dude. That was now on 93 overall KC and 31 on Supreme. So very early on we got that. Wait, why can I not teleport? The fairy ring only works for those who will fairy magic. What? Wait, that's not a Draymond staff. Oh man, that's the first dragon axe. 69,000 GP. It sounds me kind of sad to see that it's so little value these days. Back in the days, I remember as a kid buying this for like 3 million GP. No way we get another archer's ring before we even get any of the other rings. I mean, it's a good one to get twice. <laughs> we have been getting absolutely spoon-fed on this grind. That is the best ring. And uh, this is in the same trip. You can see I have Berserker ring and archer's ring in the same inventory. Only missing Sears and warrior's ring now. I do want to mention that there is actually a challenge that is kind of known in the RuneScape community called the Lord of the Rings. It revolves around getting every single individual ring in one singular trip and i really hope that in 5000 overall kc we are going to achieve this at least once oh my god there is a shortcut here i had no idea 85 agility i have enough to boost that with summer pies i think i know where this goes as well and that enables me to actually just bank my rune throwing axes and the pet rock how did I not know about this? I feel like every single video I've ever seen about how to get to the Dagon of Kings has not mentioned this. Okay, with the Summer Pie, I can now go here, and in my inventory I have no Pet Rock or Rune Throwing Access. And yes, look, I bypass everything. So if you have, I mean, at least like 80 Agility, you can Summer Pie Boost and use this shortcut so much better. With the additional supplies, I really try to do my longest trip possible. And I'm not really good at prayer flicking, and I haven't been doing it too much in the previous trips, and the last trips have been like 60 KC per one, but this time I got 124 kills in one singular trip. Oh, and uh, we also got a Berserker Ring, so that's pretty good. We have the Mage Ring coming in, Sears Ring 680,000 GP, and this used to be like 300k. Tumikan Shadow came out, it spiked up to over a million, and now it's down to, in the middle, 680k, not bad. Yo, that's actually the first time probably I'll be happy for the Warrior's Ring. It took 735k C to finish off every single individual ring. From now on, I'll probably not be showing individual rings anymore, and only if something big happens. Actually, a very big first milestone, because I have already been here for a very, very long time. That is 1000 KC, and we actually have to extend, there we go, the kill tracker a bit. But I've been keeping track of how many kills an hour I'm getting, and it's roughly 70. And that does not actually include the clue scrolls as well, but I can complete them very quickly. So let's say 65 kills an hour, that means I've already been here for roughly 15 hours. I actually have no idea why this clip is so laggy, it's actually never happened before, but the first time I actually got all of them on me at the same time and I just tried to pray flick them, was the time I realized these guys have combat achievements. So there is the first one completed for this video, and later on we are going to try to complete all of them, which are actually pretty difficult. Oh no way, this is a really special warrior's ring. Look at my inventory, we now have every single ring except the Berserker ring. So we have our first shot at completing Lord of the Rings, let's go. You know, technically I could just save spot Rex for an infinite amount of time, because I don't need prayer for this, and also my Sanguinesti staff will infinitely heal me as much HP as I need. But I feel like that is very cheap, so I'm not going to be doing this method even though it is a viable one. It doesn't seem like we're actually going to be able to finish this Lord of the Rings. The one time we actually do have a chance to get it, I did not have enough supplies to actually go all the way and uh, get lucky enough to get the ring. Of course, it's very difficult when you're on the last one, because it's 1 in 128 for each ring, so technically... You have to do 128 of a specific boss in one round just to be on raid for the last one. So you have to get very lucky overall to get Lord of the Rings completed. Oh my god, no way. We have an Archer's Ring, we have a Warrior's Ring and a Sears Ring in our inventory. We are only missing the Berserker Ring now. Rex, come on! Give us the Lord of the Rings! You really don't get these chances too often. I've been very lucky to have the back-to-back -back chances, but it seems like, again, yeah, we are not completing Lord of the Rings. I have to teleport out. Well, that's what happens when you kill these bosses for like 10 hours a day to get this grind done. You kind of space out sometimes, I guess. Fuck. 
After this prime, we're going to be hitting overall 2000 Diagonoth Kings, and I feel like this is a good point to start actually finishing off the combat achievements, because I'm getting to halfway of the drop rate of the pets, and they could finish off this grind at any time if we would get one of them. There's an overall of 6 combat achievements I'm missing, and some of them require me to have every single Diagonoth King attack me at once, so for this I am using a very tanky setup with a Blood Amulet of Fury, and there is a combat achievement that requires me to kill all of them at basically the same time, and for that we are using Chinchompas. But we're starting off very simple, with the first one being kill Diagonoth Rex while he is immobilized, and basically all you have to do for that is just throw an Entangle, an Ice Brush, or just anything like that, and then finish off the boss, as I have very good damage, that should be good enough, a Frozen King completed. Okay, for this one, all we have to do is use a special attack on the Rune Throwing Axe on Rex and kill Prime, is that enough? Yeah, it is, okay, 13 damage was all I needed, from one King to another. For this combat achievement is where my tank gear really works over time, I'm not really the best at prayer flicking. There is one of these achievements for every single boss where you have to have all of them attack you at once and you have to kill one specific of them at a time. And this time we are doing prime and that's it, it's done. This one can be actually very tricky, we're going to be killing Rex and another Diagonoth King in the exact same tick and this is where I'm going to be using Chinchompas. Let's see if we can stack Prime, they are both very low because Prime is also weak to ranged and if we can get one hit here, I th that's it, I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. That is actually quite a tricky achievement because you have to be lucky enough to hit enough damage on both of them to kill them both in the exact same tick. But we were lucky this time. It's time to kill Rex while being attacked by all of the other Dagonoth Kings. These are honestly very easy with my tank here. Oh, and piece candy. Okay, we need to kill all of them within 9 seconds, they're all very low, and oh, he died by poison! Oh my god, please. Can I just get some good hits here? One hit, please, one hit, one hit. Yes, okay, is that 9 seconds? Oh, it is! Rapid succession, and that is- Oh, I didn't even know this! That is even the entire Elite Diary completed. And we have now Green Log Dagonoth Kings. Some of those achievements were pretty difficult. But that is Dagonoth Prime, Rex, and Supreme all Green Logged. And for some reason, Rex just has one more achievement than the rest. But it's now time to claim all the rewards for the Elite tier. Probably going to be using this on Agility. And we're also going to get another Gommal's Hilt. I'm not entirely sure what the Gommal Hilts are really used for, but there is some rewards for having the Elite completed, which is a higher drop rate on Elite Clue Scrolls. And we haven't seen a single Elite Clue from this entire grind so far in 2,000 kills. And of course, we get some Experience Lamps for 25,000 Agility. Are you kidding me, man? That is a 30 Berserker ring in one single trip. That is wild. That's like, what, 16, 17 million GP from just Berserker rings in one trip. Well, it took only 2,300 KC to get the first Elite of the grind. These are 1 in 750, so they are fairly rare. But now after the Elite Diary is done, they are 1 in 712 roughly. So I guess maybe the increased drop rate is helping. It has been a nice roughly 40 hours at the Dagonoth Kings, we are about to hit the halfway point for the pets, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's definitely getting slightly repetitive, but hopefully we can get that pet in the near future, or otherwise we will have to spend another 40 hours here. But at least, the money is pretty decent. You know, it really is a shame that the skeletal gear is so bad, because I think it actually looks really cool. If this was actually best in slot, I would be okay with that. The specific day this clip was recorded on, I had been doing Dagonoth Kings for roughly 11 hours straight, so just keep in mind, that was where my mind was at. Oh my god. Yo, let's go! We're done! Oh, I can finally leave, man. Uh, we're done. Supreme is a really good pet as well. Thank God. Before we put the pet in the menagerie, this is all the loot that we gathered from all the Dagonoth Kings. That is a good amount of loot. And as you can see, we have a lot of clue scrolls to open in just a bit. And of course, a final update on the collection log with now one pet unlocked. So we still missed two, of course, but for now... I think one pet is enough, so let's go ahead and put Supreme into the Menagerie and have a look at it again. There it is, a very nice pet. These are honestly very difficult and uh, very draining to grind. It's very repetitive, but uh, let's go ahead and finish the last hard clue scroll of the grind, knowing we get to keep all the loot. 
As we have an overall of 30 caskets, we're going to try to speed run through these as quickly as possible. Starting with the Elite, we already have a Master Clue Scroll. Master completed, let's go ahead and speed run through these 29 hard caskets. And the last one, no master for a while there at the end. Let's go ahead and pick everything up and see how much we made. We ended up getting an overall of three masters, which I could complete all of them, and five million in loot from the hard casket, so not that bad. But let's go ahead and open the three masters, 693k, 664k. Can we get a mimic for the last one, maybe? They are not too rare for masters. No, but uh, Hood of Darkness, collection log slots are always welcome. But it's time to reap the monetary values of this 42 hour long pet grind. I've sold all the small stuff including the clue loot and we now have only the big items left. Collected all of that and we have a cash pile of 109 million GP. But of course that does not amount to anything compared to the pet because all the pets are pretty much invaluable with how long they can actually take to get. But that is it for this video, remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to be updated with future episodes, and until next time guys, take care.